Entropy Zero 2 is amazing, and I'm certainly not the only person saying that. I mean, you can see the reviews, it's the general consensus. I'll even consider it to be the closest thing we have to Half-Life 3. How about that? So this mod has been getting praised as being like the messiah of Half-Life mods, with this one guy's review saying that one of the cons is that I can't pay for this. Two reviews actually. And I, for some reason, did not play it when I launched. I was a bit lazy. So I also finally played it as well. Even though the hype died like months ago, it's okay, it wouldn't be the first time I did that. Since it's named Entropy Zero 2, you can imagine that it's a sequel, and it is. Entropy Zero Not 2 was also a mod, and it was also good. But Entropy Zero 2 took what looks to be like 5 years to make, and they definitely needed it because they added quite a bit of new stuff in this mod. This mod though, looks amazing. I say it's the closest thing we have to Half-Life 3, and while it looks like it could very well be. These maps are super detailed, tons of props and such. Maybe not the outside areas as much, they look a bit more flat, but still good. In the aperture places, yeah you heard that right, it's a very dark, which I guess could make sense because it's an abandoned facility. The weapons animations are new as well, and they do seem proper, if that makes sense. The models are maybe new? I'm not 100% sure, but they look slightly different, so they might be. The models for the new weapons also fit the aesthetic. This pistol that you have actually looks like something the Combine would use. The MP5 looks like an MP5. Good job. And I don't know if it's just me, but the MP5 was like, the best SMG. A lot of times it could kill with just one burst. Remember how I said this mod took 5 years to make? Well, they definitely needed it because they added a lot of new stuff. This game adds in plenty of stuff from Opposing Force, like all the enemies, and Zen stuff like the healing pools. Also, especially the Gnome, who's been buffed up since it takes quite a bit to take him out. There's also smaller bow squids, and zombie Vortigons. So at this point, there's a zombie version of everything. There's this other weird head crab called the Temporal Crab. This head crab can mess with your surroundings, vision included, and teleport. These things suck. There's only four in the whole game, and you get an achievement if you get all of them. But they for real suck. You can sometimes waste all your ammo trying to get just one of these. Since you're a combine, you fight the resistance members throughout the whole game. But now we introduce rebels with jetpacks. This is great. These guys jump around everywhere, even off of cliffs, and don't seem to care about fall damage. Later in the game you'll see this blue stuff, which is basically toxin so don't touch it. You remember the squad mechanic from Half-Life 2 and how it was pretty garbage? Well this game has the same system, but the combines seem to be actually competent in a squad, so the squad mechanic actually works decently, though I still never ended up using it. I already mentioned the new pistol and MP5, but there are a few other new weapons. They introduced the slams from Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, which you need for breaching. There's also the experimental AR-2, which is the same one from Entropy Zero Not 2. This AR-2 has double the ammo and I think shoots faster. Of course it has the new model and animation as the previous AR-2. You also don't have a crowbar, so now instead you can kick. I know this is not a weapon, but you can actually drive a combine APC in this game and it has a gun on it as well. There's a whole driving section with it, and unlike other driving sections, it's actually fun. But maybe I'm just saying that because it's new. But my favorite new weapon has to be these grenades. They're called Zen grenades, and they pull in any enemy and prop around it, and in return sometimes give you stuff, including Zen creatures. I barely used it, but I still found it pretty cool. These you first pick up in Aperture. And yes, you heard me, Aperture Science is in this game but in the story it's hidden behind the name Arbite Communications. At some point in the game, this dude, who is the main villain, will drop you down a mile to Aperture. This Aperture part is an interesting part of the game. You also go through a majority of this section with no tools at all, because you know, the material emancipation growth disintegrates all your stuff. Conveniently, it's also where you meet the Gnome. This Gnome has Superman hearing because he could be at a whole different facility at another planet, and the mere sound of a turret will alert him. For this reason, a lot of this section is stealth, because even walking by a zombie will wake them up, and because of their zombie sounds, Gnome Dude comes by like a dog. He sometimes does you a favor and absolutely wrecks these zombies, other times he doesn't care. Though at some point you do get the energy pistol and revolver, so you can go get him, which you do. And towards the end is where you get those Zen grenades. There's one other important character you meet in Aperture. Wilson. Wilson is one of the badly made turrets, but don't let that deter you because you need him to get their Aperture, I mean Arbite. He's the one who opens all the doors for you. The Gnome also doesn't care at all about him, so you can leave him while you hide. He's also quite funny. At the end of the Aperture part though, you have a choice. You can leave him in Aperture, or take him with you. And yes, you can actually take Wilson all the way to the end of the game with you. I unfortunately did not do that because I was so intrigued by being able to drive an APC that I just left Wilson there outside. 
sorry. If you take him, you can use him to open up these other garages that are in the game. And of course, there's an achievement for bringing him. Now, what about that story? This mod has one hell of a story. It even has two endings. Oh yeah, spoilers by the way. You play as this combine called Bad Cop, though he's referred to as 3650 like everywhere in the game. In Entropy Zero Not 2, he was just an officer, but because he's extra good at his job, he's been promoted to a Combine Elite. The Combine though made him the template for the other Combine Elites, so they start copy and pasting him. He's the opposite of like every other Valve protagonist. Gordon doesn't talk at all, but Bad Cop talks a lot. I feel like he has the most dialogue in the whole mod even. He also occasionally makes remarks when fighting, some good and some cringe. The combine filter he has on makes it a little harder to understand him though, so I always played with subtitles. So you suddenly wake up from hibernation, I guess, and the advisors tell you that your job is to capture Judith Mossman. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this takes place after Half-Life 2, so after Citadel go boom. So you get picked up by a dropship, which gets taken down, right by a rebel hideout. So you go inside, fight in a warehouse, you know the usual. As you go, you find Arbite Communications, and you also happen to meet the main villain, this dude. He is one of your clones, but he went rogue and kinda hates the Combine. And while you want to capture Judith, he wants to kill her. But that will get rid of your faculties, whatever that means. So we can't let that happen now, can we? In one of your small talks with him, he blows up the ground, leading you to Aperture. Your stuff gets incinerated, but you happen to meet Wilson. You take Wilson, and while hiding from a giant gnome, you get back to the surface, in the meantime finally getting rid of that thing. Okay, so you get out, and you get an APC to ride to the other Arbite facility. So you go on a ride for an hour. It's not just an hour drive though, in the meantime you're forced to go through these other smaller places and see weird stuff. You make it to the other place and find Judith with wall hacks, I guess. Of course it wouldn't be that easy, so you have a whole war with every rebel there is. Bad Cop here isn't one of those incompetent combines, so he actually wins. But Judith escapes again to some other place. You find her again and corner all the rebels to a tower. You climb the tower, find Judith and capture. Great. Or not. Your clone still wants to kill both of you, so you run out the tower. And apparently Judith can die if you run too fast. Like, you serious? You hand her to the combine, but then the advisor says your next mission is to stop your clone. You follow him to some secret place with a generator that he wants to destroy. This is where your first boss fight is. I say first because there's technically two, but this is the main one. You have to fight your clone who can teleport and is pumped up a bit. You almost get him, so you still chase him. You keep chasing him while he does his villain speech. This is also the part where if you bring Wilson with you all the way, he... dies. Of course, he also does that movie thing where right before he dies, he talks slowly about some copy-paste life lesson that everyone's heard of like a million times by now. Still, Rip Wilson. Anyway, you finally make it to your clone who's sitting in front of the gate to the Borealis. He also has a long-winded speech that ends in either you shooting him or him getting dunked on by a whole container. The advisor comes out and tells you that you got an A-plus on your assignment, and your reward is becoming the perfect template for all other Combine Elites. This is where you choose between two endings. You can do nothing and let the advisor mess up your head and make you their template, or you can shoot the thing. If you do that, he is the second boss fight, which of course is harder than this bozo. When you defeat him, you magically make it onto the Borealis to meet G-Man. The voice actor for G-Man does pretty well, by the way. G-Man lets you destroy a template, which you kick in the face. Hooray. Nope, turns out you still get tortured. The end. There's your story. It's really simple on paper. If they didn't add all these other extra sections, this mod could have been like 40 minutes probably. A lot of the time comes from the driving part, but I don't think it's padded out badly. You actually explore different places, so I think it's pretty good. And all this mod is amazing. It hits all the right points. I can see why it took 5 years to make. You could probably get someone to believe this is Half-Life 2 Episode 3 because it feels like it is. So if you're like me and didn't play the game when it released, then go try it out. It's worth it. But anyways... Bye.